Hi folks, G3 here, and welcome to another installment of my journey to go green. Today's episode is another one of my gardening updates. This is where I tell you what I've been up to over the last week or two, show you what I've been doing, and it's an opportunity perhaps for you to get some inspiration to get out in the garden and do things like this for yourself. And also, it's a good opportunity for you to leave some comments down below and let me know what you've been up to, whether you've been doing something a little bit differently, whether you've got any advice, tips, I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so one of the things that I'm working on this week is I'm gonna be planting these core jet plants and I'm going to be doing it in this raised bed. Now you would have seen previously that I put some leaf mold on here. It's still taking a little bit of time to break down but that's fine because these courgettes are perfectly happy in this environment. They would grow quite happily on top of a, uh, a compost heap as well. So it's really not a problem being in here. You would have seen that I planted these plants a little while ago. I did it in one of my gardening updates showing you what I was doing and I've planted them in these um, quite rigid high um, containers with some Melkor compost and they've grown really really well so I'm pleased with these plants at the moment uh, in truth I'm not too sure where the courgette line ends and the squash line starts because I, I got a little bit confused as to where they are I know for sure these three on the end are courgettes I'm not sure about anything further than that so I'm gonna have to double check now one thing that is really good when you're um, planting things like this is to give yourself an opportunity to give them plenty of water when they're growing so I've got these cut down bits of drainage pipe that I use every year. So it's excess drainage pipe and I've just cut it into a reasonable length. And what I'm going to be doing is burying that in the soil and then planting the courgette above that so that you have an opportunity to water down here and the water will go direct to where the roots are of the plant. Now, this is particularly good when you're doing squash plants in this environment. It's not quite the same with courgettes because they don't send out quite as many leaves. But if you're growing squash, for sure, you get so many leaves here, it's hard to work out where the actual um, main body of the plant is and where the water should be. So having this sticking out, knowing that you can water down here to where the roots are, it really helps a lot. And I use this for the courgettes as well because then I know I'm getting the water right down to where it's gonna need. It. So the way that I work with these, I will create a hole, I will bury the pipe in, plant the courgette on top and then fill the hole in. And that's what we're going to be doing here. On this kind of location, I can realistically probably fit in actually about six um, courgette plants. So that's what I'm going to be working on. I've only got three here at the moment that I know for sure. I'm going to wait and see these other ones when they've grown. I think the next row are probably courgettes, but I need to, to wait until they've grown a a little bit before I can I can be a hundred percent sure so I'm going to put in three today and then just see how those others go um, over the next week just to double check so let's get some of these pipes and uh, courgettes in now one thing to bear in mind is to um, wear gloves in this kind of environment. The reason being is that I have had um, uh, foxes doing their business um, in these kind of areas before and it's not particularly pleasant. Now because I've got three and I'm probably going to have a bed of three at the front, three at the back, I think I'm going to plant from this side nearest and I'm going to dig out the hole. Soil's really good here where the compost has broken down previously um, and this leaf mold is also breaking down so that's that's great. It's going to be a good environment for these to grow in. So I, I need to make sure that these tubes are going to be accessible so I try and poke them towards an area that I can easily get to to make sure that goes in. I just need to double check the height these are going to. Um, one tool thing I found useful for these tubs is using this dibber to help poke the plants out from below. So I will just pop that in the hole. There we go. Getting a really good root system with these. You can see they're growing nicely and I need to work out the height for this. That's pretty much going to be it. Also helps if you've got a little bit of a bowl so that you can water above if you need to and it will help um, retain that water. Right and then I'm just going to pull that back in around the plant. See that's why I've got these gloves on. I like using my hands to do this kind of work in the soft um, soil. It just uh, I find it so much easier. Gently around there. 
So I've created a bit of a bowl so that it will retain the water around the plant and guide it to where it needs to be there. That's great. So there we go. I've got the first plant in. That was quite easy and straightforward. And I've got a tube going right to the bottom where the roots are going to be so that the water will go right down there and that will help that not grow nicely. Now I will need to protect these so I'm going to put the um, slug pellets on afterwards. Right, I'm just going to go and put those other ones in as well. Okay, so I've got those three in. I'm just going to give them a good water in. Now, part of the, the reason for giving them a good soaking, as well as obviously making sure that the plant has um, access to water. The soil will um, be carried by the water and, and, and fill the gaps that have been in place through me putting the uh, the plant in and the soil around it. It will also work to make sure that there is a good connection of water between the soil and the plant roots that will help the, um, the uptake of, of water. So I mean if there was a bit of a gap between those it, it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't help the plant, it would start dehydrating a little bit. So that's why I'm going to make sure these have a reasonable water. Now I've done this um, in the morning so that they're in place and watered before any heat of the day comes along. And when it comes to actually looking after the plants in the future, I'm simply going to be able to just fill up the tube underneath with water. And, uh, and I know that they're going to get a regular water then. And I've got them positioned them so that they're easily accessible from the pathway. There we go. And the final activity is I'm going to put down some of these um, slug pellets. Now they are approved by the organic farmers and growers. And the active ingredient in them is, it's an iron based one, it's ferric phosphate. Now these will um, impact the slugs, but they don't impact other creatures such as things like hedgehogs and, and the like. They're not gonna um, have an imp same impact on those. So because I get a lot of slugs and snails around here, I am gonna put some pellets around now that I've watered. There we go, that's a good job jobbed. Glad to get these in, let them start growing. And like I say, I'm gonna wait for the other ones to grow a little bit more in the tray, just so I can determine which ones are um, courgettes and which ones are squash. And of course, that's a great advert for the fact that you should label your plants properly to make sure that you know which is which, uh, and this, you'll avoid issues like I'm facing at the moment. Right, let's get on with the next job. Another one of my tasks this week is I'm gonna be repotting these cucumbers that are in here. Now, I planted them in these small modules to start off with, but they are are, um, they're going to be too small from now. The roots are likely to be um, starting to poke out. Yeah, I can just see the roots underneath um, poking through. So I want to repot these. I've chosen this size pot that they're going to go into. So let's get my compost first. Get some nice Melcourt compost. There we go, that'll be enough to start. Now, what I've got here is a nice little trowel. It's a Bergen and Ball trowel. I've got a couple of different um, sized ones for using in small pots. Now, this is a really good one for getting into these kind of pots and being able to lift out the, um, the seedlings without causing uh, problems to the roots. So that's what I'm gonna use. Just gonna tuck that down the side and push that down. And gently lift this out. Here we go, that's looking good. Can see some nice roots on that one. Right, I'm just using my hands. I haven't got gloves on because I, I know this compost's good. It's not like working out in the garden where the foxes could potentially have been. So it's fine just to use my hands here. Create a little dent in the middle for that to go into. Pop that in. Now, I don't want the compost right up to the top of the pot because you need to make sure you've got a level that can accept water. You need to be able to put some water in there and for it to have time to drain away. There we go, that's one repotted. So I'm gonna work through these other cucumbers here and, uh, and repot those. Now they're potted up, you can see that I've put a, a label, a clear label in one of the pots to make sure they're visible. I'm gonna give them a, uh, a good water just to bed them in because some of them were a little bit on the dry side and through doing this it will settle the soil and make sure that there is water in contact with the roots to help aid the, um, the uptake of water. 
water. So after this good water, I'm then gonna go and put those in the greenhouse. One thing that's great to see are the number of solitary bees that are making use of the bee hotel that I've got uh, at the back here. We've got a couple, obviously these, these have been uh, made and uh, bought them, but you can make your own just with a bit of wood to make a, um, a box and then have some empty bamboo tubes. I do have to clear the cobwebs away from these quite often just to make sure they're not getting trapped. Speaking of which, like this one here. So let me just clear away that cobweb if I can and try and give it a hand. There you go, Pickle. There you go, you got yourself a little bit trapped. There you go. Is that all right, mate? Are you okay now? Do I need to just hold on a little bit and see if I can help you ease that off? All right, I'm just trying to help you. That's it, you're almost there, you're almost there, come on. We're almost there. There you go. How's that, it's okay. Is that okay, you feeling better? Yeah, there we go, brilliant. Good, good, good. Yeah, so you, you must keep the cobwebs out. I just use a stick to get the cobwebs around because otherwise it's so distressing seeing them, them get trapped in there and you haven't noticed. A lot of tomatoes I also planted in the same tray and they are uh, getting to a reasonable size now. They've got their first um, pair of, of true leaves, so not the initial seed leaves that, that come out. These are the, uh, the true ones, so that's great. I love these because... Mm. Lovely smell of tomatoes. I'm going to follow the same process of repotting these. The good thing is about tomatoes is that if you plant them below the surface level, so more of their stem below the surface, you will actually get roots coming out of there. So it's beneficial for the plant to be planted slightly below the soil level to get those um, those roots coming out and to help with the, um, the support and extra uptake of water. So that's what I'm going to be doing with these. I'm going to use slightly smaller pots than for the cucumbers because these plants are slightly smaller so I will bring them on in these pots until they uh, they outgrow these and then I'll decide whether I'm then going to be planting them out or whether I'm going to repot them again um, I'll see from that but for the time being this is the size of pot that I'm going to plant them in. Same process I'm going to take using the, um, uh, the trowel to lift them out gently so I've got two in this one there we go, we can see the roots are growing nicely. I've got a couple in here. So I'm gonna gently separate these and plant them up individually in the pots and work through all of these. I fill the pot to a reasonable level. Create a little hole in the middle. Get the tomato plant out. I support it by using the leaves rather than the, uh, the roots or the stem because they're delicate. So use the leaves when you're transferring it and then you see I've got it below the soil level so some of the existing stem is below that level so the roots will also potentially grow out of the uh, the stem there and there we go all done I've repotted all of those the a load of empty cells in this tray now there's one or two tomatoes that are still here at the moment they were too small to, to transfer over because I've got a load of Phasalis at this end of the tray because they're still in there I didn't rush to get these tomatoes out that's fine they can stay in there see if they grow big enough um, and I might need some spares who knows but those are transferred now so I need to water the pots and then I'm going to put them into the greenhouse Give these a good water. There we go, that's all of the uh, cucumbers and tomatoes that have been transferred into the pots. They're now in the greenhouse 
and I will let those grow so they're a reasonable size until they can be transplanted. The cucumbers will definitely be in the greenhouse. The tomatoes, some of them will be going in there. I've got space for some tomatoes. The rest are going to be planted outside in um, the tomato trainers that I've got that work really well in, in grow bags. So I've gone and potted extra tomatoes. I won't need all of these. It's good to have them growing so you can select the best that are available at the time. So I'll let these grow on, see which ones are the best when I need to transfer some into the uh, greenhouse or into the tomato trainers and, uh, and any that are excess I will discard. In previous years I've left them outside at the front of the house with a sign saying please help yourself and a number of those have then been taken by people who want to uh, have free tomatoes and grow their own so that's great they're um they're going on to uh, to other homes any that have been left over i've then um, put into my compost bin well there you go folks that's my gardening update that's what i've been working on over the last week or two hope you enjoyed it and found it useful if you did then please click the like button down below and also if you've got any thoughts about how you i could have done things differently or whether you're doing something different at the moment that you'd like to tell me about then please leave your comments down below i'd love to hear from you and if you haven't done so already then why not subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you get notified when I load up a new video. Well, thanks for watching, folks. I really appreciate your time. Until next time, bye.